Ja, det är så i så vi jobbar då. Find a spot to sit down. Which which rune does this belong to? Navajo. It tastes good. I, it tastes good too. Pretty amazing. These are our ancestors, you know, these are ours. Mm -hmm. So it, it takes you back to a time when things weren't the way they are now, you know. Yep. But this is God's country, definitely out here. Over here on the other side, Manzanares Canyon. And then beyond that is the highway, the highway that goes to Dulce. And the other side, way on the other side is uh, Francis Mesa. And that road, that peak that you see way over there, that's called uh, Governor Door, Governor Door Knob. Mm -hmm. Governor that's Door Knob. So that's the sixth one? Yeah, that's one of the sacred mountains over there. So that one there, you can see it from here. You know that story, he goes, uh, where the twins went up to see the sun? He said, that's, they say that that's where it happened, he said. I Although, looked at my grandpa and I said, Shinola, that us I need a nunnins and a COVID. And then he looked at me and he says, Oh, <laughs> wow. oh, he goes, I was there. He goes, eh, hey, he cracked up. Of course, he was like, <laughs> that was his rule, you know, it was like, <laughs> Now that one is uh, where we've got, where we were given the tool to live by, which is the uh, the life of balance and harmony, I guess is the best way to put it. That's where it happened over there, from what, from what, I, from what I understand. So, e ajigi hutashita. Hey, Yeah, this is beautiful country up here, man. It's like God's country. But the only thing that really makes it terrible is all these, I see all these, uh, what all these oil companies are doing that are tearing it up and um, but they have no no regards as to you know what's here 
And they, yeah, and they said they did the same thing. I mean, they tried the same thing with Chaco, and it didn't happen. And they were, they were somewhat pissed off about it. But so, what do you think is a good solution for it? Oh man, I I, I really don't know. Um, it's, these these oil pumps have been here since the early '60s. Yep. And um, so it's 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 hard for people to make new changes or get adjusted to new changes. Somebody's going to bitch and gripe about it no matter what. This is a traditional place for Navajos, the traditional place of the Pueblos is basically what it is. Which Pueblos? The Laguna, Santo Domingo, Acoma, Hopis, and some of the Zuni from what I understand. And uh, this whole area, this place called Denetka, is actually a part, a part of Chaco. And one day, some white man come out here and they separated all these, oh no, Chaco Canyon is over here, you know, no, no, no. They connect. And this whole area is a part of Chaco. Aztec ruins, salmon ruins, and it, it runs all the way down along the San Juan River, all the way into you what is now Arizona and into Utah. And then going up north, it goes up as far as Arbelize and up in uh, Ignacio, up that far up further. And then it reaches beyond that. But this is, all this area here is connected with uh, Chaco, Chaco Canyon area. I love to see this whole place turned into a monument, a national monument, just like they did with Bears Ear and because it holds the same significant. Someday, our kids are gonna ask questions. Who are we? Where did we come from? They're gonna ask. So, and if we don't have it, we have nothing to show for it. It's gonna be all gone. Well, Donetka is basically um, where we, we, we came to be in. I guess that's what it means, where we came to be in. Kudo'e Hanit, in the Navajo language, you know, Kudo Hanit. This is where we came from, that's what they're saying. Throughout migration, that we ended up in here, in this area. And the Pueblos, the Pueblo people, our ancestors were already here. And little did we know, we were to be called Navajos by by the United States government back then. But uh, those, those the, the Pueblos weren't here when we arrived in this whole general area. They were already here, living in this whole area, all the way along the San Juan River, all the way down into way back there, Mesa Verde back into that whole. They had actually left Mesa Verde and moved down into this general area. The Aztec rooms and all these like were, were big major areas. Chaco, so Chaco Canyon, all these. All this area is of one. It's a one big old place. It's not. It wasn't separated. So the Pueblos pretty much lay, lay, they didn't claim it. In the in the, just the opposite. It the land itself. They say we belonged to it. We belong to the land that is out there. And this is what they were talking about. Because the land is what sustains our life. Everything that we need is out here. Food, homes, everything that we need is out here. So in that way, you know, it's not like that we do today, you know. Oh, this land is my land, just over here, you know. We don't put, we never put up no trespassing signs. We never did. But then again, thank God for these guys coming across. Otherwise, we wouldn't be driving this real nice blazer. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah I, I, I'd still be riding my donkey, you know, trying to whip it, you know. With no, <laughs> we would have been, this would have been like a three-day long yeah. interview on horseback. Oh, yeah. So, where, where's uh All right, so we got Governor Doorknob. The Sixth Sacred Mountain, which is a spout opening up to the sky. 
And then as we climb up over here, monuments. And you said BLM reconstructed this? Right. And we can actually walk through it. Oh, couldn't know. No. It's a very cool place though. Good place for rattlesnakes to kick back in here. So you gotta be careful. But you can come in here and uh, this is all Navajo in here. Very, very cozy in here, very, oh. very, very cool, cool place. Yes. Hemis Mountains, which was east of Torreon and Ojo Encino, which I was at. You got the mesas near that area I was at too in Ojo Encino. Then you have our sixth sacred mountain, Chotli. Then we have Another sacred mountain over here, which is Hesperus Mountain. Right. And that one's called? The Benza. The Benza. Yeah. And then over this ridge is our fifth sacred mountain. That one's Zitla uh, yeah. Dili. I've been saying it wrong all these years. <laughs> <laughs> and in this area, <laughs> and in this area I have Nagizi and Counselor Leda. Oh, that's what BLM calls it? That's what BLM calls it. Escalante Mesa is what it's called. Uh, audit. Hey. Not Trump. Mm -hmm. When the non-natives arrived in this area, one of the things that they said when, when before they put the railroads in was that, that uh, natives didn't cl they claim to any land they didn't lay claim. And, uh, but of course, uh, Mr. Hunter is not native, but he understood what these petroglyphs were. And uh, he says, when the railroad company came in, they wanted to put, put out a lot of these uh, railroads. One of their claim was that, well, natives have nothing in, in writing that says that. But Dr. Uh, Mr. Hunter believes, says, okay, then what are those petroglyphs? What are they for? See, back down there where we were at, where I was showing you that one, and I said, you just have to kind of learn how to read them, and a lot of those are Pueblo. And, but of course, back in those days, you think that texting is something new. We, we were doing texting back then because we just didn't have that conversational uh, understanding of language, so we had to write out a lot of that stuff on the rocks. So a lot of it was done that way. But in, in its sense, I mean, one of the things that they did was that's how they marked off a lot of the clan barriers, clan. So, so, so this clan lives in this here, this heart, this here area. And that's, and that's one of the things native people learned how to read was that. And we knew better to not go beyond that. We stayed out of there. We, they, they, they respected each other's, uh, you know, boundaries. They couldn't read it, but we did. Yeah. So, and this, that, that caused a lot of friction, a lot of wars among natives and non-natives when they arrived in this area because they thought, you know, it was, it was theirs for the taking. But it's something that we didn't understand. You know, why are these people moving in, just taking it as they freely would, you know? So, but that continued, you know, it was like throughout centuries. And it's, it's way past, you know, there's nothing we can do about it, but. Well, that's interesting this, to even compare it to like to compare a lot of this to modern day texting 
because we are literally putting text but in drawing we're putting emojis yes <laughs> on yeah. the walls we're putting emojis on the wall we're telling the story through emojis and next person comes through we'll read it and be like oh okay yeah 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 we're, we're we're from the same clan right yeah exactly but then Nandane or Bilagana would come through and be like, I don't see any property line. I don't see any stakes. This is ours. Yeah. Hey, they've got some scribbles up there, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. Again, there's a misunderstanding of culture, which is even we're still getting used to it up to this day. I'm still getting used to it up to this day. Mm. My wife is still, my wife's Bilagana. She's still getting used to it up to this day. So that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, because right, we're, we're right up on top of it. We're right up on top of uh, the, the glittering world. We're right up on top of it. This is where it is. So a lot of we're right in the central part of it, where the the, the story is uh, located. First, it was the black world, out of the blue world, out of the yellow world. Ah, we emerged into the white world, Dan. Ah, the nas we move forward into glittering world. This whole area right here. Mm -hmm. So when I was uh, going around uh, doing my research, I went to one of these medicine people. He's long gone, the late uh, John Hot. I said one time by the I said, why are you doing it, you know? He says, well, it was told, and he's like, a long time ago, we, we used to tell, we're not supposed to go back into those world. He said, don't need that, no. Dotan, he don't need that. don't need that, no. But, he said, but, it's good to, for a purpose, to to leave something for your kids, your grandkids, your great great grandkids. Who's gonna do it, Nila? Why are you putting that into into writing books? He says, you go up there, they talk to you. And in return, you put it back. You need to you get you find out what you need to know. And that's what you're doing. So in that sense I guess it's good. No, I don't guess. I know it's good, I know it's good. Because uh hold on, who's gonna do it? Nikilange in that estate, a lot of these people had left this world that had all this knowledge. Did any of them leave it behind? No. They just took it all with them. Maybe it's just because of our laziness. I shouldn't he eat on bani naan. Ita so adu kuiya adu kuni tehi sa benda huil ah very little of it. Nila da nila long time ago there were so many ceremonies. Oh chayun de chatne a lot of it's gone. Oh chayu is there only a handful out there? Cut cut out. We replaced it with a lot of moder modern ceremonies, a lot of these modern modern time ceremonies. And um, we do stuff like that. And uh, it's taken over a lot of it. And uh, back, I was saying earlier, late 15, 10 years ago, and uh, I started my research. I went around the Taos people, the Santa Clara, gathering all that information. And I've noticed that the story is us, but the majority of it is connected with corn, not dung. Not done the nah nigi if it's and then the, a lot of it's done with the Lihut Ahin all the way. By the time I got into Laguna and around that area, Adi Di Shato, around that time she we started this is like about nineteen two thousand uh eighteen, yeah, not that's eight. But anyway, through that time I was getting all that information on the comparing it. 
and I noticed that there's a bar behind that. So I went, I came back. By that time, I came across on this way. I got a hold of these guys down in Alamo. Then I noticed that Bahanegi, it was different. It was different from what we had over here in the Four Corners area. As I come across this way into Tuajale, uh, up around uh, what is now got Canyon Sito, I've noticed the story starting to change. And then as I came across, and they could go either what is now Edenle Pru at Do, Edenle around Torion, Do, right in that general area. The store di Hanegi Sahoani, there were bits and pieces that were not told over here on this side. I've noticed Mescalero, Zigiya, their stories, Bahanegi, they're almost identical to the ones over in Alamo. I've noticed that. That's not Ayikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikikik
white shell woman was the one that gave us the animals for protection. Those were the ones that given us the a during their sun dances. I mean, their their uh, you know, those uh, puberty ceremony dances or whatever. A digi, he says that that al jishiki a that's the that the staff that was given to us nila. That's us. That's us nila. The women igi ede hot ahuish enigi ede. That's the staff that was. Beyond the ebon that when the sun do let me get on me, the Navajos do be it. Nelson de ina. We got one day down there. Ida sabes pa el ni ina. Ah, each one of us got it. Ina each group got it. Aro e in dita has tweed on the men got it too. E ida pa el tranjiki nila pa el tranji drum ida ya hot es enigi and hot san hot es ya ida gi hot ay ya an ta gi da hot ay asa ya es ka but. About around about 1920s, around that time, Navajos that Anila, they told us the instruction was to not unravel that that thing because that's what our stronghold was. Begin mm. that see ah Anila, you guys unraveled it. Instead of just singing and instead of praising the holy ones, you started praising each other. So that's where you guys messed up. You weren't supposed to unravel it. Because now I saw a door on the hit of a soul. And she said, Go ebony na e. You're easily, we became very easily vulnerable. When she lago, Adanila. They knew we had relatives up there. So, e ade and not all the date. So, e yagi, e ate, sniddy, the key on any hanagan, it would it any hashkishne. Those four groups are then not the day, e ate, sneddana. What ah? So, and I, 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 I kind of, I kind of start to believe there's some truth into a lot of those things. You just have to listen to it and uh, combine it. What ah? Bitches town. What ah? So, I had uh, some of the questions I had, you know, it's like, was there ever a, a major war that we had with the Mexican people or the, uh, the Utes or the Comanches and all that? Did we have wars with you guys? Um, they said, no, it's like, not, not, not a major one, more, more, more or less like uh, only still like, a, yeah, just scrimmages or you steal my wife and I'll go over there and steal yours, that type of thing. It, 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 uh, there was no major, we can go over there and club the hell out of you. You know, we didn't do that. And it was like, because there's always that connection that we knew that we that we we were a part of our ourselves. I know. You go up north. Eh, prior to that, who were we? Who were we? What were we? I go. It goes all the way up north. And uh, so I, I start all the way from Alaska to Hostan Yago, making that the uh, the Yellow World, all that area Hostan Ida. So, but what is now, as throughout Canada, people were separating. What the Athabascan people need to get us what all that time, and ever so often we come across some of these other tribes. So, we pick up here, we pick up there, you know, we, we're just moving on. But throughout thousands and thousands of years, we're migrating right and now, right now, right. In the area of what is now, I'd say around Gardner, Montana, Gardner around Yellowstone, maybe a little bit further north, right in that general area. We come across some of these groups, like the Arapahoes, the Cheyennes. Actually, during that time, they were in that whole general area, dominating. Mm -hmm. But we were, we were just moving through. We were just coming through there, uh, from what I understand. Adi, eh, eh, one of the main groups, eh, those, that group was called Tkachini. Yeah. That's one of the original groups up there, La Ida. Real, so from the up north, two right. states away from us. Yes, that's where Touching comes Kachini from. Touching comes from. Oh, but during that time, there was also some other tr other clans that were still in existence. The Eagle Clan, the uh, the Bear, Arodimaitso, the Neetadalia, different ones. You know, that were coming through. There were a, a different clan. A lot of those clans extinct. After we integrated with the Pueblos, Tuahuiza, but some of that same group, right around what is now, I'd say, uh, Rock uh, Rock Springs and around Cheyenne, Wyoming, around that general area, what is now then there, right around that area through migration, the group separated again. 
uh, a couple uh, going off this way into California. A, those, of course, are another group of Tachinis. Tachi, the net, living up around the area of uh, Redding, California. Aro A, north of there, are the Hoopas, the Hoopa people. Aro, the, the uh, Silese people. Mm -hmm. These are all Athabascan tribes, and they're little bits and pieces of groups that are all the way across scattered in there. Those are from the breakups, uh, the, 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 the main ones that kind of broke off from that main group. Mm -hmm. But whereas some of these other ones, they kept moving down. So by the time they reached more down to the south area, what is now considered maybe uh, Vail, Colorado, or somewhere in that general area of Denver, the group started to split again. One group coming off this way, all the way across the uh, east side of the, the Rocky Mountains, up to what, what is now Denver, the Colorado Springs that moved down this way. And the other group, they came across into what is now like Gunnison, Colorado, coming out by uh, what is now Mount Rose, Colorado, right in that general area. But from what we found out through a lot of the researching is that we go back out there and there's places like this that we go and we find remnants uh, a lot of the Hogans and a lot of the stuff that they left behind. Hmm. And so we know there's another separation there again. And some of these people were saying, And that is where our emergence done. Over there by, uh, by Blanca mm -hmm. up in the Walsenburg. Yep. Okay. Which is our other sacred mount, which is right. Blanca. Right. It's not general, right. Yeah. And that's one of the places. So when we went back out there again, we, we, we looked around and said, they were trying to decide which one it is. You know, is it the one over on Wheeler Peak or is it the one on this side? You know, and, and it's like at, at some point that the whole mountain was one. You know? mm. So, and uh, so, a Ajigi, that's one. Okay. Now we emerged through. Blanca Peak. I mean, uh, this one over here, uh, Hesperus Mountain, down there. So okay, I was like, all right, you know. And then when I was talking to these guys over here on the side of uh, of, of Kianta and up up this way over here by the mountain, they don't black mesa to go. I was going to lay penny on. They nodded that now. Kuda yahasi na, Danila over Navajo Mountain. See. So everybody had their own origin story. Yeah, from their, from exactly. The their clans are from. Oh, see. And that told me that throughout a map, there was three separations like that. What the, uh, three go exactly. See, three of them. This group coming in from the, over here at the far east, that's through what's now Walsenburg. It's mm like -hmm. coming through by way of Hesperus right here, the Hesperus Mountain. This one here was a break off of this group here coming out over here by Navajo Mountain. What the, uh, eh, eh, da. Yeah, so that's, those are three of the main groups. Auto, there's another one. Of course, that's from the from the uh, Santo Domingo. A, the version of the Santo Domingo. We emerged over there. And there are different colors. Yeah, from that earth, from inside the earth. What are they? So this group over here, the one that's coming through Walsenburg, they split again. Mm -hmm. One going off right there, which is the Hickorias. We weren't the way we were. We had no TEAs and we weren't like that. See, we didn't have that so at then. They're almost like planes in Yes, coming we in. were like that. Oh, yeah. Okay, once we... The reason why the argument came to being was because of the integration. We were told that we weren't supposed to do that, Jen. Mm -hmm. I guess the argument stemmed from that. So that's what caused the separation. During that time, I guess this group that's going off this way left. Uh, some of them going off this way, the other one going this way. Those became the Mescalero and the Lipan Apaches, Ajigogi, each one of them. They were to come back, you know, coming back as either Tkudichinis and uh, Hanulahnis or what have you. Ishin <laughs> Adan, they would come back as that. So over here, Kujiyanki, that ones that moved on, eh, those were the ones that started the integration. 
But of course, coming across there, we still had that integration going on. Remember touch sheetings? Mm -hmm. Those were, already, were, they were continuing the integration with the uh, Comanches, the Kiowas, the Utes. Every time we come across some of these band of people, we either steal from them or they steal from us or whatever. You know, there's little small scrimmages here and there. And, uh, and we arrived over here. So by the time they reached Taos, Adi, the, then the full integration started. Dita, that's the story, okay? That, that, that's what I found out. Ado and Dita, there's some other tribes. Ado, and of course, they, if you go further down, the Maindeskis than that. You know, all these. And then another group, by, the, by that time, another touch sheet emerged from that, from the uh, Isleta. Because that was a branch that kind of went right, off there. Right, exactly. And Walsenberg and moved down south. So, so by that time, the only reason why the integration was really going strong for us was that because we were bred for the purpose of being nomadic. Make sure he keeps the wolves and all that away. And that same purpose, I guess that's the reason why we were bred. Huh? And it worked out fine, you know. We were the watchdogs in a lot of in a lot of ways. But in the process, odd, ah, we had to get rid of the way we were dressed and we had to get rid we had we were starting to mold. They were molding us into what was to be. What ah ah the end he catch During that time we started to we started to emerge, you know, as to who we were to be. Ah the end. And so a lot of the, the original clans that arrived had disappeared by that time. Mm -hmm. That's interesting because that's pretty much the new emergence. Yeah. So then in a way, our clans are evolving like it is now. Every day it's evolving when we mix with a different clan or a different tribe. There's a lot of changes that is happening within our own people and with the world. What do you feel that's the next change, the next emergence that's happening? One of the things that uh, they foreseen was the disappearance of humans as we know it, as ourselves. The Neha Iniki is going to be gone. And we're starting to see a lot of bits and pieces of that starting to happen. It was said that the first thing that was going to go was the language. And that's starting to happen. A lot of, and it was sad to say, but it's, you know, they're starting to see it. So, Aroe, then what then? Aroe, the, the disappearance and the adult things, the Neha Iniki Dida, as humans as we know it. So if we have a young viewer watching this who is from Shiprock or near the area and they want to get to know older stories like this, when do you all meet at Shiprock and where? Um, most of the time, uh, we I used to have these like starting in the fall, usually in either October or November. And it's usually up at the Healing Circle Wellness Center. And uh, a lot of it's all, all on a voluntary basis. They can come in. And a lot of the conversations are very interesting, to be honest. Your, your best bet is to probably get a hold of the Healing Circle Wellness Center. Also, another good group is the uh, the hospital down there at uh, a young lady by Chanel. Uh, her name is Karen. Karen, um, and then also Miranda. Miranda, the, geez, I forget their last name. Anyway, they're down downstairs with Dr. Percy. They work down there in Shiprock. They have this thing every month where they come together and they, they do stuff like that yeah, every yeah. month.